My last vlog was about my trip to the Iraqi capital of Baghdad, the holy city of Najaf, the country's fantastic people, and the awesome Iraqi cuisine. But this vlog will take you on another adventure in the same country, covering my trip to the world-famous ancient city of Babylon, one of Saddam Hussein's old palaces, the nearby city of al Hilla and the city of al Kufa. I visited these places on day trips whilst being based in Najaf, where I was volunteering as an English teacher. So today we're heading to the ancient city of Babylon, which is just north of the city of al Hilla in Iraq. We've just stopped by the side of the road to see this beautiful handicraft shop. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to um, a packed day ahead of us. On the way to Babylon, we visited al Hilla city for breakfast. We tried a traditional Iraqi delicacy called Bagla Biddehan, which is made of cooked fava beans, egg and bread. The city center of al Hilla, surrounding the market, seemed quite poor and conservative, but it was bustling. Other parts of the city, such as the malls we visited, were not as conservative and had an atmosphere similar to Baghdad. After leaving al Hilla city, we made our way to the ruins of Babylon. When approaching, you can see the old city walls from the road. Upon arriving, we were mesmerized by the fantastic structure known as the Ashtar Gate, which was originally constructed in the year 575 BC by King Nebuchadnezzar II. We've just arrived at Babylon and um, it's pretty damn hot even though it's winter. Uh, this place is absolutely phenomenal, but um, a lot of it is a lot of it is made up of replicas. Uh, for example, the most famous gates in Babylon, I think it's called the Ishtar Gate, um, is actually in Berlin. But there is a replica here and it's still fascinating to see. This is the original reconstruction, which is located in the Permagon Berlin Museum. We spent a few hours wandering through the ruins of Babylon, going through places such as this, the maze or labyrinth of Babylon which unsurprisingly was fairly difficult to get through. There were quite a few tourists at the site, although there weren't any other foreigners. I suppose many people came from Baghdad on a day trip. After walking through the ruins, we decided to head to our next destination, Saddam Hussein's old palace. But as we were leaving the Babylon ruins to go to the palace, we came across live music and dancing. Although I think it was for advertising purposes, it was still nice to see. During his 24 years in power, Saddam Hussein is said to have spent 2 billion US dollars on building almost 100 private residences across the country. One of the most extravagant of those residences is his palace in Babylon. Being inside a palace that was recently owned by Saddam Hussein feels quite eerie. Now, the palace is filled with visiting Iraqi tourists, families, and teenagers. Over the years, the palace has been looted and graffitied all over the place. Behind me right now is an old palace which belonged to Saddam Hussein. But following the American invasion of Iraq in 2003, this place was um, graffitied and um, it's now a tourist attraction. The location of the building is fantastic, with the view of the ancient city of Babylon on one side and the view of Iraq's mighty Tigris River on the other. The palace itself is a testament to Saddam Hussein's narcissism. As you walk through the palace, you can see the Arabic letters of Saad and Ha engraved into the walls. These letters stand for Saddam Hussein. You can also see his face engraved into the wall. It is also interesting to see the nationalist artwork on the ceilings of the palace. After leaving Saddam's palace, we went down to the nearby Euphrates River, where a park has been built on the riverbank. 
The atmosphere here was great. Seeing people enjoying themselves, playing music, relaxing, and smoking shisha. There were even tourist boat trips on the Euphrates River. It felt as though Iraq, after years of violence, was finally coming back to life. After this, we slowly made our way back to Najaf. On another day trip, I headed to the nearby city of El Kufa, which is home to the famous Great Mosque of Kufa. Unfortunately, I was not allowed to take my camera inside. This mosque is famous because it contains the tombs of prominent Islamic figures, most notably the tomb of Muslim Ibn Aqil, the first cousin of Imam Hussein. Some also believe that this is the place that Noah built his ark. The mosque was originally built in the 7th century, although it has undergone multiple renovations. The city of El Kufa receives immense amounts of pilgrims every year, many of whom come from Iran. When we were there, it felt like there were more Iranians than Iraqis near the religious sites. Before leaving the city, we took a stroll through the city's streets and its market, which was big, but not as bustling as the one in neighbouring Najaf. Unfortunately, it was soon time to leave Iraq, and I did so earlier than initially planned, due to issues with my sponsor, which I'd rather not discuss. So it's my final night in Najaf now, and I'm currently hanging out in a shisha place, an Argila cafe. Um, unfortunately, I have had to leave earlier because I had some arguments with my host here. But I've had a great time here. I've met some absolutely fantastic, lovely people, like like Ali, my friend here, who's, who's, who's taking me out. Um, and I will remember this place uh, as a place of super warm people, friendly hospitality, and somewhere that will stick in my heart for a long time to come. I miss you so much.